everyone, this is Marin, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Angela. You've got episode 125, where we go our own way with Syra Siddiqui. We are going to get to that conversation soon. First, we have a few announcements, and we wanted to welcome everybody to our podcast. Thank you for coming back. If you're new and this is your first time being here, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, And we wanted to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters. If you are interested in supporting us on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. We have a few shout outs, a few new patrons that we just wanted to recognize. Mm -hmm. Jen, Jill, Jennifer, Sarah, and Elise. Thank you for supporting us. Yes. We are so thankful for all of your support. You're making this podcast happen. And also, we hope you're getting a lot of good content and lots of things out of it. So Definitely. Um, also, we just want to make kind of a big announcement. If you are have ever thought about joining our Super Squad, which is our $8 level of Patreon, we are going to be capping our Voxer group soon uh, because it's getting full and the conversations are just so good in there right now. We don't want to overfill it. Um, and so we just want to cap it soon and kind of make some decisions about what we want to do going forward. Yeah. And so if you're in the Voxer group, you're in. We're not closing it or anything. You're there. Exactly. You're grandfathered in. <laughs> um <laughs> And so we're going to close that in one week from today when this episode releases. So December 9th, um, we're going to cap it. We're not going to close it. We're going to just cap it. So if you've ever thought of getting in, now's your chance to jump at that. Um, After this, you can still support us at that level. You can still be a Super Squad member. You just won't be able to get into the Voxer group until further notice, until we figure out how to. Right. And we're always thinking of other ways to to um serve you in the at that level too so if it's not a box group where you know there will be something else and we're going to be doing other great things but um if you are looking for that that connection that community um where you can talk you know kind of i don't want to say in real life because it's not really in real life but it kind of feels like real life conversations um so if that's something you're looking for this is your chance to do it and you know the group is so it's just so good for that i'm just so I'm really mm-hmm. proud of what we've created there because we're really yeah. connecting people who um, want to have those uh, relationships with yeah. other homeschoolers and like-minded folks. And so I'm I'm really happy about everything that's been going on in there. I just Ugh. I just want to preserve it because I don't want it to get too large and like have it right, be convoluted. Right. So so we're gonna make some Absolutely. decisions yep. moving forward there. But if you want to get in, get in now. So. Um, A little bit about our podcast. If you are new here, um, we are here to change the conversation about homeschooling. A lot of times Mm -hmm. um, people, you know, when you just start homeschooling or even if you've been at it a while, you can start to feel like, oh, there are so many things I need to do. I'm not Mm going to get to all of them. How is this possibly going to work for me? And overwhelm sets in. And I just feel like that's a very Mm -hmm. common um, thing that homeschoolers feel, myself included, And so we are here to encourage you that it's okay to not do everything. It's okay to take a few things off your plate. It's okay to um, let rise to the surface the things that you are good at and your children are good at. And to just Mm -hmm. think a little bit differently about this whole endeavor. Yeah. And I think we have kind of been led to believe that if it's uh, not hard or you know I think we've been kind of trained like we have to be kind of stressed out or always working on something outside of what you know our comfort zone and working hard to these huge goals um and then it just becomes less enjoyable Mm -hmm. but we feel like that's kind of what we need to do and so what we're here to do is to tell you where you're at is good Mm -hmm. where who you are right now and who your children are right now is good Um, and find ways to enjoy where you're at. Yes, definitely. So thank you for being here. All right. One way you can support us for absolutely free is to rate or review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Believe it or not, this helps us tremendously. It helps people to find us. It helps new listeners connect with us. Um, And so if you have not already done this, would you consider doing this? If you search us in the Apple Podcasts app, you can find us this way and do it there. And you can do this on any Apple device like an iPad, iPod, iPhone, 
Mac, whatever you have, um, you can do it there. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we so appreciate those. Very much. Things. Just a heads up, we are not going to be recording uh, for the holidays. So <laughs> I have a few things going on. Yep, you and do. And so do you, Angela. <laughs> well, I think um, it's safe to say you've got a lot going on this year. <laughs> that is true. That is so true. We, uh, yeah, I, I was, so Sean just uh, wrote on the whiteboard the other day, just to give our family a heads up on our busy, our next six weeks. In the next six weeks, we have five birthdays, <laughs> including four of our, all of our kids' yeah. <laughs> birthdays, um, three holidays, eight cities, one wedding anniversary, two plane rides, and one dog sitter. <laughs> Wait a minute. Eight, <laughs> all eight in cities? Weeks. Apparently. Oh my That's what gosh. Sean wrote on the board. Now I'm, yeah, I know. I know. That is a lot, Lauren. It is so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's our biggest traveling portion of the mm -hmm. year um you know so we're like not staying in one city for one month yeah. until january yeah now so we're we're basically traveling from now until january and so it is just yeah we're it's gonna crazy. be very mobile and yeah <laughs> you have a busy you have a busy holiday season anyway because of the holidays and anyway four right. four kids birthdays and it's always crazy and I always just like take uh you know high five Sean in the middle of November and I'll be like see you <laughs> see you in December or January because you know like we're not we don't get to spend a ton of time together mm -hmm. until then and but this year it's like even more yeah more so yeah. so really so anyway. yeah so we're not recording regular episodes here until January yes. but we're still gonna be working hard in Patreon and exactly. social media and our other areas so you can find us in those places if you want yes Yes, yeah, so I'm really excited about this um, mm. conversation today. I got to talk mm. to Syrah Siddiqui. If you don't know her, um, we discovered her on Instagram, <laughs> kind of yep. where we discover a lot of people these days. And we just loved learning, yep. learning from her about just life, family, education, unschooling. Yep. She's an unschooler. She lives cross-culturally. Um, she talks about race. And we just... Love learning from her and wanted to get to know her. Yeah, I was really drawn to her, um, just her confidence. And um, I don't know, I just, I feel like when I re when I listen to her, I'm really, um, I'm encouraged by what I feel is right in education mm -hmm. and what's good for my kids. And she, she just really reiterates it in a, um, I don't know, just a way that speaks to me. So definitely. I love hearing from her. Definitely. And I'm and I'm jealous I didn't get to be part of this conversation. I know. You were you but had some bad internet. So I, I, I just handled it and internet. it was fine. Yeah. No, you did <laughs> but I know you job. had some major FOMO. I did. Yeah. I always do. But oh yeah. So we just wanted you to hear her bio because it's so good. We no, normally don't read mm -hmm. these bios <laughs> when we have mm -hmm. a conversation with somebody, but this was so good and it's just I we wanted you to hear it. Um Cyrus mm -hmm. Siddiqui is a freelance writer slash parent educator. She is a fierce advocate of critical thinking, anti-bias, self-directed education, unschooling, and stronger emotional health for parents and children. Tens of thousands of families have benefited from her teachings through courses, articles, and her blog, Confessions of a Muslim Mom. She is currently pursuing a doctorate in social education. Prior to having children, she taught for several years in public and private sector. She has been featured in Parents Magazine, Forbes, NPR Parents, and Yahoo Parents. She currently lives in Chia, Colombia, where she and her husband are raising three never-been-schooled global citizens. Also, Syra and I got to extend our conversation in Patreon. So we got to talk about her favorite books, and she's got lots of good um, recommendations mm. there. We talked about what she doesn't do, which was probably my favorite part of the conversation, mm -hmm. um, and Always. where she's giving herself credit. So if you want to hear that and you're, you're in Patreon, you will be able Great. to hear that. So please enjoy um, this conversation with Syra. Well, Syra, welcome to Homeschool Unrefined. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Could you start by telling our audience a little bit about yourself, your family, um, maybe your background a little bit and what you're doing now? I know that's a big question, but maybe just like a little overview. <laughs> that's a good uh, okay, so I am a former school teacher, actually. Um, I taught elementary school, um, and then I had kids, and I decided to stay at home and be with my kids. Um, we have been 
sort of doing a, some variation of homeschooling since they were mm-hmm. quite young, and that has sort of evolved into unschooling. Um, we are all originally from Houston, Texas, where we, where my kids were born and raised. But we recently took a little bit of a detour. Um, my husband was given the opportunity to work here in Colombia. So we packed up our family and we moved abroad. And we've been living here for about two years now. Wow. Um, yeah. So that's... That's exciting. We'll get it. We'll ta- I will ask you more about that in detail in a little bit. Sure. I'd love to hear more about that. Um we, before we get started, we talk a lot about personalities on our podcast. <laughs> and, I love it. and oh, good, because we wanted to know if you know some of your personality types, it just helps us get to know you better. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know all the things. Oh, good. <laughs> I know all the things. Okay, Great. so um, I think with the Myers Briggs, mm-hmm. I am ENFJ. Mm, okay. Um, I don't know what the, the what the, term is for ENFJ, but I know it's Obama, it's Oprah. Um, wow. All yeah, the good people. A lot of very dynamic personality things. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I snuck in there, but um, I think um, there's one with four, four things. Four te- the four tendencies? Okay. is and, and I'm a rebel. Oh, you're a rebel. Okay. You're yeah. a rebel on the four rebel. tendencies. Okay. Uh, and then what's another? Enneagram. Enneagram. Right? Yep. Okay, so I know I am a seven. Okay. I don't totally trust the scoring of my wings, and I don't really, I don't really figure, I haven't really figured out the wings thing yet, but I'm yeah. definitely a seven. Okay, so you're a lot like Marin, who is not here today. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is an ENFP, a seven, and a rebel. So I feel like I know I already, I'm getting to know you really well just by knowing those few yeah. things. Yeah. We have uh, pretty much a sound. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're very adventurous. Yes. So I can see why like moving to Columbia was just like probably really exciting for you. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you're a rebel. So you're unschooling. You know, oh, okay. I know it makes so much sense. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, already? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I am um I'm an ISFJ, so I'm, you know, an introvert and kind of opposite of that. And I am a Enneagram six. So I'm more of, you know, I like to take adventure sometimes, but I'm also really like nervous a little bit, skeptical. Um, I need to feel My safe. Son is a six. Yeah. Oh, I, your son I, is I a six? Yes. <laughs> yeah. My son is a six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, would you tell us in a little bit more detail, you have your blog and the work that you do, Confessions sure. of a Muslim Mom. We'd love to hear how that came about and maybe like how it started and what your hopes are for that now. Okay, that is a good question. <laughs> um, okay, so when I started, actually my kids, I, I had twins first. Oh. Um, and so I started when they were toddlers, I want to say around the age of two. Um, but what kind of happened is after I started, after I had kids, I started to become submersed in this parenting culture. Um, and, and I noticed this bombardment of messaging coming at me, um, you know, like all new moms and, you know, my background is in education. I know a little something about early childhood development and I was, there was kind of this disconnect, you know, there was all this messaging coming at me and, it didn't really vibe with what I knew to be true about child development, children's Mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And I just thought a lot of it was just nonsense. And it was a lot of fear mongering. And it was a lot of, you know, trying to hype up parents to worry about things that they really didn't need to be worrying about. Um, So I had a conversation with a friend one day, and I must have been talking to her for a couple of hours. And at the end of this very long conversation, she said to me, I wish that all moms could just sit with you and listen to what you're saying Mm -hmm. because it just would ease, it would bring so much peace. It would ease their worries. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the seed that sort of planted the idea for the blog. Yeah. Uh, Originally it was just a space to have conversation amongst parents where we would talk about things that were going on Mm -hmm. and really sort of dissect what we Mm -hmm. thought about it. Um, But it has really evolved over time. I think, you know, in the run up to the presidential election in 2016, Mm -hmm. um, I started to get to a place where I felt very comfortable expressing myself through this medium. And as the culture of our 
country and our society sort of started to shift a little bit. Um, and to be honest, as my kids were growing older, mm-hmm. I started to think about, you know, this idea of raising children who come from these, you know, quote unquote, marginalized communities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Muslim, they're the grandchildren of immigrants, they're mm-hmm. brown. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But they identify so much with being American. Um, they didn't have all of this conflict that I had growing up, kind of feeling torn between two worlds. Mm-hmm. But but I almost feel as though the, the society that we're living in now, the, the times that we're living in, um, it almost feels as though there's less acceptance for them as Americans, mm-hmm. even though they feel so much more American. Right. And so this just started to bring up a lot of interesting things, a lot yeah. of interesting thoughts. Um, and so my blog kind of took a turn and I just became very um, honest about what mm. my experience was like as a Muslim American, yeah. um, raising Muslim American children, mm-hmm. uh, who also is kind of coming out of the closet as a as an unschooler, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody knows that I home educate my children. Yeah. Uh, but but people kind of don't really know a lot about unschooling. Right. And there's a lot of bias and a lot of uh, misinformation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started to just become much more open. And mm-hmm. and yeah, that's kind of where I am now with my blog. So you didn't start off being like, an un- obviously, you didn't start off unschooling. So you didn't yeah. start off with the schooling bent of your work. Yeah. That kind of evolved as your kids evolved. Yes. But yeah. I think I think one thing that has, has always been been a common thread because it's always been a common thread in my life, Mm -hmm. um, which is critically thinking, looking at things and really sort of, and not just accepting what has been given to me, but really thinking critically about, you know, all this messaging that's coming my way. Right. And that, isn't that the goal of like, that is what we're trying to teach our kids. That is the goal of education. That is the goal. Yes. (laughs) That is the goal. So you're doing a good job of really modeling that for them. (laughs) Well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I, I consider myself to be a, a parent instructor. Um, mm. I, I had like a cool title. I made <laughs> it was like a digital, you know, instructor, whatever it was. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm talking to parents and I'm trying to sort of turn the light bulb on in their mm-hmm. own minds. Mm-hmm. I challenge the way they think. I, yeah. A lot of times people will say that I, I flip the way they think about things. I shift their yeah. perspective. And the hope is that they take that on and they carry that on with their children as well. Right, right. And we need that. We need people in our communities to do that for us. You know, we can't, yeah, we do. Um, and we found you through Instagram. And so that's where I imagine you're doing a lot of your work, but I'm, I'm sure you do a lot of your work elsewhere. And I know you have a class or two that you yes. also do. So where is the bulk of your work? So Instagram is my home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I love Instagram. Um, okay. That really is, that really is my base. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, I do teach. Um, I, I, I just, I'm about halfway through um, uh, a cohort um, in an unschooling course. It's the okay. first time I've launched it. Yeah. Uh, I was really overwhelmed and really happy with the response that came from my community. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people signed up and were very interested. And interestingly, a lot of people signed up for the course who don't plan to homeschool their children. And I even have a couple of people who don't have children. That's so interesting. (laughs) I was going to ask you that. Are these already unschoolers or? Yeah. (laughs) No. It's kind of incredible because it it mostly is people that, most of it is people that are are hoping to make the plunge into homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, But I think, you know, I think a lot of people came simply to learn how to think outside the box and how mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. be a critical participant, you know, yeah. in, in culture and learning. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. so interesting. And what's really, I think, um, probably in, really interesting to people is that you used to be a teacher and, yeah. you know, Marn and I both used to be teachers too. And so the fact that you're coming from that background, I think, um, maybe gives you a little bit more credibility <laughs> for this unschooling thing. I'm I not sure how you, th- it does. do you think that? I, I think it does. I think actually the interesting thing is people think that, 
um, I know with respect to homeschooling, people think, oh, it's so easy for you mm, because yeah. you have this background. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, no, no, no. I had so much more de-schooling mm-hmm. to do in mm-hmm. my mind yeah. yes. um, because of the background that I came from. Yes. You know, I felt like I had more work. More know, unlearning. More unlearning to do. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you used to be a teacher. Um, you quit your home to quit your job to stay home with your kids so that you could learn with them. Why, why did you decide to do that? I'm curious about that. Was that a challenge for you? Um, you know, if I'm totally honest, it really wasn't. Okay. Um, I, I sort of came from this idea that, you know, I think we live in this, we live in this construct Mm-hmm. where work is separate from mm-hmm. our families, yeah. right? You have to choose. Mm-hmm. You cannot do both. Mm-hmm. And for me, yes, I taught, but that wasn't the extent of my quote unquote professional work, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There, when, you know, when we think of, you know, who we are in terms of our work, I really look at it in terms of what are my passions? What am I pursuing? How am I contributing, right? Mm-hmm. And all of these things are things that I knew I could continue to do even if I chose to stay home with my children. So So yes, I was no longer working outside of the home Mm -hmm. in a certain capacity, Mm -hmm. but I never in my mind really thought, okay, now that is completely shut off Mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm just doing the mom thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always been pursuing something else. So it it wasn't such a hard decision for me because it was just literally a question of, I weighed my priorities Mm -hmm. And for me, having that time with my children, you know, I, I don't like a lot of the verbiage that gets used in this mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. Uh, for me, it wasn't a choice of choosing my children, right? Yeah, because right. Because mother doesn't prioritize her child first. Yeah, right. Okay? Um, but it really was, I wanted to, I wanted to have a substantial amount of time with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew I could do that and still pursue my passions mm-hmm. and pursue something else for me, mm-hmm. um, just in a different capacity. So it sounds like you've always been a lifelong learner yourself. Like you've always kind of had that mentality about yourself that your work and your life kind of go together and you're, um, you're just always pursuing things that are interesting to you. And you've always um, not really had a separation between work and, and home. I think so. Yes. <laughs> but I will qualify that statement. <laughs> okay. I, I will qualify the statement and say that it wasn't until I really, truly embraced unschooling mm. that my life, mm-hmm. my own trajectory took off. That's awesome. I, that was going to be my next question. How did yeah. you do, how did you transition to like embracing unschooling for yourself and your kids? So I had never heard of unschooling. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I didn't just, you know, sit down and read a book on unschooling. Yeah. And think, oh, this is a great idea. Um, <laughs> It was really a process um, for me anyways. Uh, You know, I was with my children at home. It was a really great environment in terms of they were very supported. Um, It was a very nurturing environment. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I saw the beginning of some really miraculous things with my kids. Mm -hmm. And the most miraculous part about it was It wasn't me. I wasn't Mm -hmm. doing anything. It was just, you know, they were following their own instincts. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that they had a lot of curiosity. A lot of the learning was happening very naturally, very organic and very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was just kind of staying outside, you know, just kind of watching it. Yeah. And, you know, I I had some light bulbs going off Mm -hmm. all along, you know, you know, especially when you come from a background of of being a teacher and all the things that you've been trained to teach children and here they are learning it completely on their own. They're happening without you. (laughs) It's happening without you. (laughs) So I think um, that was kind of the beginning of the journey for me. And um, I think one huge step was when I had my youngest, so Mm -hmm. I had, I had done the whole planning thing and there were, the kids are about three, three and a half years apart. And I thought, okay, this is, this is good because mm-hmm. I'll have enough time, you know, with all three of them together, just enough. Yeah. And then I'll send the two bigs on their way to school and okay. I'll have life. I'll yeah. have life with one, you know, yeah. which I, I had never had before. Yeah, actually, right. <laughs> before um, and then I, I went around and I looked at different schools and, and I just, 
Yeah. Part of me was heartbroken thinking yeah. of them being in this place where mm-hmm. this amazing thing that's been happening at home and outside mm-hmm. of school mm-hmm. could possibly get squashed. And mm-hmm. it was just a risk I was not willing to take. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even then, I was not a committed homeschooler. <laughs> I, I was just doing it, you know, for a little while. So, um, like in kindergarten or when your kids were in so kindergarten. I- kindergarten yeah let's let's just do this for a little while and then we'll send them to school uh it took me it took me a long time to really embrace Mm -hmm. you know um but but the further we kind of went down this path the more we saw how amazing it was Mm -hmm. um how much benefit the kids were having with it Mm -hmm. and it just kind of snowballed you know um and even the distinction between traditional homeschooling and unschooling I just you know I just noticed over time the less I was involved, Mm -hmm. the more they were really um, embracing learning, the more they were kind of taking off. So I kind of learned to control my need to control and I step back and that's where we are now. And how, tell me how old your oldest two are? So the twins are 11 11. and my youngest is eight. Okay. All right. Do you find as they are getting older that um, you are wanting to or like you have the urge to do more traditional type stuff with them or are you like more fully embracing this unschooling thing as they're getting older I think a little bit of both okay um so I I noticed that they now have the capacity Mm -hmm. to learn in ways that they didn't have the capacity for when they were younger yeah Um, and so by that, I mean what we would normally consider like a more traditional style. Yeah. Um, but we still have very strong unschooling and self-directed roots. Really, yeah. I really like the term self-directed yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, but but we really have very strong self-directed roots. So so we are still in this process of constant uh, back and forth, a constant mm-hmm. reassessing, right? Yeah. yeah. Where um, because at the end of the day, I want them to be successful adults. Right. And adults don't have people telling them what to do. A mm-hmm. lot of what makes us successful as adults mm-hmm. has to be very intrinsic. Mm-hmm. And so with my own children, I, I'm kind of going through this process of really kind of coaching them on mm-hmm. how to get that sort of inner compass working mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Uh, and how to, how to, how to do things on their own, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but there's just a sense of, you know, sometimes kids have to be coached to be the best version of themselves. Mm. And that's kind of where I find myself shifting as they get older, yeah. you know, especially, you know, as the puberty years come, yep. <laughs> it's a whole nother, yeah, it's a whole nother, um, you know, ball of wax. And I think that navigating these, these emotional times uh, and these, kind of transitional times, mm-hmm. health, um, yeah. and assistance. Yeah. Uh, but, but they, they definitely are still in charge of steering their ship. So kind of a balance. Right, right. So I'm curious if you would ever consider um, your kids going back to some sort of traditional school. And I ask, you know, it's kind of a personal question, because uh, my oldest is 14. And last year, she was in eighth grade. And she said, um, I think I want to go to high school. And I was like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> you know, um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I was really sad at first. But then when I got over that, I thought, you know, she's, she's really doing what I have um, taught her or like wanted to instill in her. She is taking charge of her education and telling me what she would like to do. And so this year she's in school and it's a whole new thing for us. Um, you know, it brings challenges schedule wise and all of that, but, um, she's learning and growing in a way that she wants to, at least for now. And so I'm trying to be really supportive of that. So I'm just curious, um, is that something you would ever consider for your kids or, um, or how, how committed are you to homeschool? Um, you know, the thing is I support my children, whatever it is they decide to do. Um, we've actually had this conversation with one of my children. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, some of them are not interested at all. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. (laughs) All passed. Uh, but I do have a child who is quite interested, and we've had conversations about this. Um, 
I think if my kids um, expressed an interest in going to traditional schooling, I would absolutely be supportive of that. It would be tricky for us because, because for us, unschooling and self-direction isn't just how we learn, but it's a, mm. it's a complete mindset. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of, a lot of de-schooling that has already happened with all of us. Mm -hmm. And to go back into a traditional standardized yeah. box, schooling sort of situation mm -hmm. um we are still who we are yeah going into that situation and so I've had some conversations with my husband about what that would possibly look like mm -hmm. and where it could possibly get tricky mm -hmm. um and I know it could be challenging it could be challenging figuring out even where to put them in yeah. terms of grade right because yeah. when children kind of go off at yeah. their own speed in different directions yep. they no longer they're not on that conveyor belt they don't mm -hmm. it doesn't match so evenly right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so that would be a challenge another challenge would be um I think a lot of the things that are that a lot of the systemized things in, in this particular institution like the whole concept of assessments mm -hmm. and what is being assessed and how it's being assessed and what meaning and value do we give to assessments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband and I are not exactly on the same page mm -hmm. in this issue, but, you know, if I send them to regular school, if I sent them to traditional school, grades don't matter to me, yeah. you know, in the slightest, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, he's not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, there would be, there would, there would have to be a constant, you know, um, self-evaluation um on right. our part and on their part as well yeah um so it would definitely be tricky but yeah. I would support it yeah yeah interesting um and I'm glad you bring up that you and your husband aren't exactly on the same page because I don't think anybody's <laughs> is with their partner really you know yeah. we're all I've... negotiating that stuff <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly yeah um so you are also at this time going to school to pursue a doctorate I am. Yourself in curriculum and instruction? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so why did you decide to do that? I'm just so curious. <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny. I, I decided to unschool and then I know. <laughs> back to school. It was, everybody was like, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I decided to go back to school because I noticed that there was a gap uh, in terms of the research related to unschooling. Oh. Um. I really read as much as I could about this philosophy and just this whole idea of self-direction. And just, you know, from what I've read and from what I've seen with my own children and, you know, mm -hmm. others who have sort of taken this, this leap, it was really disappointing to see that there's not so much research out there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of those things that helps, you know, once we come from a schooled, mindset mm -hmm. we've all been schooled we yes. come from that culture and so I can talk to anybody on the street and they will give me a thousand reasons why school is not great yeah right. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I mean they, they'll give me a laundry list of things that they know is not working with mm -hmm. the school system yep but they cannot subscribe to unschooling mm -hmm. even if they see it working Mm -hmm. Because it so mm -hmm. completely goes against what they know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so research becomes incredibly important mm -hmm. for for a community like this as it continues to sort of build momentum. Yeah. And so I thought, you know what? I'll go and I will contribute to the literature and I'll contribute to the research. And that was my intention when I when I mm -hmm. first started going back to school. So you're going to do research on unschooling? Yes. As part of that your doctorate? Was that was yes. the plan. That's the plan. That okay. The plan. <laughs> has it changed? Um, it has, it has, uh, it's been tweaked. It's been a little tweaked. Bit. Okay. Um, Great. you know, higher ed is not quite what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, as are, you know, as K through 12 has become more and more, um, as K through 12 sort of follows this business model. Yeah. So too does higher ed. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be much more of a corporate culture in higher ed. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be much less of a focus on actual learning, actual mm -hmm. higher education. And so 
you know, I originally thought that I was going to come into this space and I was going to stay in higher education. I was going to stay in academia. Mm -hmm. Um, I've sort of pivoted a little bit and I am really embracing the work that I'm doing through my blog. Uh, I'm really embracing the courses that I've been putting out. Um, I don't have to deal with any bureaucracy. I don't have to deal with any red tape. Um, I don't have to deal with nonsense in order to, you know, maintain, yeah. you know, standards and sure. tiers and all of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can just go straight to the parents. Yeah. And I can make immediate impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I've had a little bit of a, a direction shift. Yep. Okay. Um, but yes, I'm still all about unschooling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So um, we alluded, we talked about this a little bit before, but I'd love to hear more. So you are living in Colombia. Right yes. Now. You moved there. Are you, <laughs> are you also like living in Houston too, a little bit? Are you doing both? Uh, okay. So we have a lot of family in Houston. Okay. So it would be virtually impossible for us to not spend a significant amount of yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so we go back and we visit a yeah. lot. Okay. Uh, people are very confused because we sometimes, sometimes our visits are um, several weeks long. Yeah, multiple yeah. Weeks long, but yeah. but that's that's why we go back and visit so much. So I'd love to hear more about why you decided to go to Colombia. I think I saw that it was for your husband's job. So I'd love to. I just love to hear more about that and why you wanted your kids to experience living, um, you know, abroad. <laughs> okay. Um, so. My husband's job was kind of the cover. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was um, sort of the means. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the real reason was we really wanted them to experience, um, we really wanted them to experience life outside the United States. Yeah. We, you know, my husband and I are both children of immigrants mm-hmm. and we spent a lot of time uh, throughout our childhood um, visiting our parents' home country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, before we had children, we actually had the opportunity to live um, in Pakistan, which is where uh, both of our families are from. Okay. And it was just such a profound experience for me. Um, I've always, I've always identified as being American. I've sort of always been in that bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to see, you know, when you live in a place, you're you really see people for how they see themselves, Mm -hmm. not how you see them. Mm -hmm. And that really is an opportunity you can only experience when you've been in a place for a significant period of time. And when you speak the language, Mm -hmm. I think language is incredibly important. Yeah. um, Because there's so much cultural nuance found in language that gets lost in translation. So I knew after I had that experience that, that whenever we have children, Whenever that happens, mm-hmm. I would love for them to have this experience of living somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Columbia came as a complete and total shock mm-hmm. to us. Okay. We had sort of, you know, I we, for years I had been telling my my husband, put your name, put your name in the pool, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or travel or, or working globally. So I knew that I wanted my kids to have this experience of living in another place and learning another language. Mm-hmm. And really getting to know another people, yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it came about. Yeah, and so you you have to be there for a significant amount of time to learn the language, <laughs> you know. <Yeah>. So <laughs> you do. I, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. So you, I mean, it's got to be longer than six months to a year. I mean, how how long did it take yeah. you to pick up that language and for your kids? Okay, so we had a conversation about that just this morning. Yeah, <laughs> we. We've, it's been almost two years. I want to say yeah. it's been a year and a half, I think. Um, we probably have about another year, a year and a half left. Okay. Um, but there are things that kind of, you know, just through immersion, things that mm-hmm. kind of come up that you pick up. Yeah. Um, we we do have formal Spanish classes. We have we a do. teacher who comes to the home, oh, teaches nice. okay. uh, all of us Spanish. Yeah. So that has been really helpful. Um, but, yeah, I think there's a lot that happens through just osmosis and immersion. Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes I'm surprised. Yeah. I will know a word, and I had no idea that yeah. I I knew that word. Um, but I've also learned that fluency is a fluid term, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, I always thought there's going to be a point when I'm going to feel like I'm fluent. Yeah, and I I have not reached that point. No. Yeah, I don't know if that point will come. Yeah, uh, but. 
you know, we are just somewhere in this continuum. Yeah. You know, we're, we're doing the best we can. So yeah, that's great. So you've been there a year and a half to two years. Is it too soon? Have you um, collected things that you're learning from this experience already? Oh, absolutely. We started collecting things we started collecting things on the very first night because, you know, when it was it was like 12 o'clock at night uh, and we were driving through Bogota and, you know, Bogota is a big city. Okay. You know, it's a very big city. And, and my daughter <laughs> turned to me in the cab and she said, this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? And she said, and this, it, I mean, what she said really stuck with me. She said, they're just, there's just people living. Mm. And her, the innocence that she had in that mm-hmm. statement, mm-hmm. but this idea that, wow, people really are just people everywhere yeah. in the world, yeah. just wow. living and, you know, going through the, the, the motions of their lives. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was the beginning of just, just making three dimensional and four dimensional um, a place and a people that have always been two dimensional for us. Mm. Um, and that was, that was really why we decided to move. Um, yeah. Because I think that there's so much flattening of people's narratives and people's stories. And you don't, you know, those stories don't come to life unless you really learn to start listening to people and unless you really start getting to know one another. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think one of the other things for me personally that, um, that is kind of what I was alluding to when I was talking about, you know, getting up and moving outside the country. I think that, you know, our culture tends to be very, um, be individual first mm, and mm-hmm. community second. Yeah. And I think that this, this is, this happens a lot in very capitalist driven countries. Mm-hmm. And for many places in the world, it's community first yeah. and individual second. Mm-hmm. And I think as Americans, we feel a sense of, encroachment on our our individual rights and liberties Mm -hmm. to put the community first right it's it's kind of a you know a slight shifting in in the scale of priorities Mm -hmm. but but being in communities and being in countries and cultures where community is valued slightly above the individual it's really such a profound shift Mm -hmm. that I see um you know, little, little things like I will, you know, it's so common here that we will go to a restaurant and as we're eating our food, we'll look in the parking lot and we will see the workers standing in a circle, mm. kind of doing breathing and stretching exercises because wow. there's a sense of, we have to take care of one another here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a sense of everybody matters. Yeah. Even the person that cleans, even the person that clears the table, everybody matters. And it's such a contrast sometimes to what we see in the States. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I think I, it's just a priceless experience to yeah. go somewhere else, yeah. you know, and we, we think, you know, we, we have this, this slogan that we say that we're the greatest nation on earth. And in so many ways, there, there really is tremendous greatness in the States, mm-hmm. but there is such greatness in all of these places. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really a privilege for me to be able to go and explore and to see, um, yeah. And, I, and I'm thankful for it. Yeah. And what a great gift you're giving your kids. I mean, it's amazing. I hope. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Well, Syrah, that is really powerful. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and talking to us about your life and unschooling and all of that um, goodness that you just shared. I appreciate that. Thank um, you so much for having me. Yeah. And um, we are actually going to continue the conversation a little bit on Patreon. We're going to talk about some of the things that you don't do, which is kind of a staple for us. And we're going to get you get some book recommendations. So if you are on Patreon, you can look forward to that. If you're not, you can join us and get that conversation. Um, so before we go, can you tell everybody where they can find you? I know you said Instagram is your favorite, but where where are all the places they can find you? Um, all right. So yes, if you if you want to find me, my home away from home is always going to be Instagram. You can find me in other places. Um, you can see me on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I do have um, I, my website is in a little bit of a transition. Mm-hmm. Um, it was confessions of a Muslim mom.com. I am transitioning over 
tasirasiddiqui.com. Mm. Yep. Um, it is a complete waste of time to check out those spaces. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> uh, they are parking spots. They are they are parking spots. Um, and I don't frequent them often. But okay. but really, if you want to know anything about doing, you will find me on Instagram talking about it constantly. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. I did actually just look to see if you had a Facebook page and you've got like 41,000 followers on your Facebook page. So it's not like this I, l- little I thing. Show up I feel bad. But yeah, I, I, I moved. <laughs> I moved a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Syrah. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to loving this week. Marin, uh, yes. what is your LTW? Okay. My LTW might be the same as a lot of a lot of people's LTWs uh, this week. It's Disney Plus. All right. <laughs> I think I've joined the I've I've hopped on the big bandwagon. Okay, tell me what you love about it because we haven't done it yet. Okay. Yeah, and I just have to tell you, I know you're probably really skeptical about this because so was I. <laughs> Why do you I think was I'm thinking, skeptical? Uh, because I don't think you're into Disney. Yeah, movies. I'm not. And actually, neither am I. <laughs> That's I am not either. And actually, I wasn't going to buy it. I wasn't going to get it except that we got it for free because we are Verizon wireless customers oh yeah and I think if you have an unlimited plan you get it for free for a year which is awesome nice and so we thought I just thought okay fine we'll just let's just try it out I mean yeah for fun. it's free we'll watch a movie we'll watch a movie on it and we'll, whatever it's fine anyway so we got it and I am blown away there are so many choices of movies besides all the Star Wars movies um, all the Marvel movies yeah. and then the classic Disney movies, which I'm not super into, but I've kind of always wanted to show my kids some of those at least, but you can't like, you can't actually watch them anywhere else. You can't rent them anywhere else. You can buy them. Like I can buy them on my Apple TV, but they're like 20 bucks and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like I just want to watch it once. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe not even that, like a half, half of a, a movie <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to show the kids what it's all about. Anyway, um, I just, I'm, what I'm loving about it is this whole platform, everything on here is pretty much okay for my kids to watch. Mm. So I, I just feel like it's rare, even like on Netflix, there's just such a small amount of things that my kids actually want to watch that are okay, that's okay for them to watch. And then same with, um, you know, Hulu and everything else, YouTube especially. And also like, even in those things, like it's hard to, for example, Hulu, it's really hard to filter what's good for my 12 year old. You know what I mean? Like I I want her to be able to watch something more than, you know, my eight year old, but it's really hard to do that on those platforms. Disney plus is just all okay. Yeah. Okay. Just go for it. Pick something and watch it. And I um, didn't think that was going to be that big of a deal because, like I said, I wasn't sure if I was going to love all these things, but I am just so thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad about it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, we watched... Oh, and then they also have National Geographic shows on mm, there. Yeah. Which is so great. Like, just unlimited, all needed... I mean, it's just... This keeps going. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So what have you watched? I am I am loving it. Uh, so far, we haven't even watched much except that we watched the, the live action Lady and the Tramp, which is was made for Disney Plus. You mm. know, like you can only get it on Disney Plus. Oh, um, and we we loved it. Is it new then? Loved it so it's new. much. Yeah. Oh, okay. brand new. I see. It's brand new. Yeah. And also, um, if you have ever watched a Disney movie at the movie theater in the past, you may have seen a little short film at the beginning. Mm. You know, like they have these yeah. little shorts. They're all on Disney Plus, and they're so great. That's these awesome. are really good little, and we've we watched several of those. <laughs> um, and you know, the kids watched Moana while they were folding clothes the other day, mm-hmm. and it's just great. It's like it's kind of a novelty because they haven't watched Moana for yeah years. So <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. Right now, who knows how long we'll love it, but right now, I. Um, I'm, <laughs> I really appreciate yeah. it. Well, my son is asking daily for it and oh. he has a birthday <laughs> coming up and Christmas. So I'm like Ooh, holding off yeah. because, you know, of course he's into all Star Wars and all Marvel. I mean, those are his things. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we'll yeah, probably end up just doing be it. Like at his fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have Verizon? Wireless? No, no. Mm-hmm. 
so so you had to pay for it but it's still only 6.99 a month which is a, it's not huge i know it's it's a pretty but good deal that's a pretty good deal all right angela what are you loving this week? okay i am loving a cardigan that i got on amazon and wear pretty much every day it has become a um like my uh cap it's become part of my capsule wardrobe i don't Ooh, officially nice. have a capsule wardrobe i mean i just wear the same thing a lot <laughs> so but, i'm calling yeah. it a capsule wardrobe i yeah, wear it with yeah. my leggings and a shirt under it i love so it great. so much because it is i'm typically not into asymmetrical but it's got an asymmetrical hem <laughs> Mm. like longer in the front shorter in the back it kind of wraps around Mm -hmm. and it's got a little hood I would say it's warm not too thin not too heavy I just think it's very flattering and comfy and stylish for a mom okay yeah so I am loving it so much that I got one color I got the gray um oh I'm sorry I didn't tell you the name of it it's called splendid Splendid Women's Thermal. Oh, okay. Splendid Women's Thermal Wrap Hooded Cardigan. Thermal. So it must be. It's I mean, got that. it's nice for winter. It's nice for winter. Yeah, thermal meaning no. it's got that like waffly. Mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like what your yeah. long johns that ma- yes. that material that I'm not selling it. I like it, but it's it's nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. And okay, so I loved it so much that I went and got another color. The only problem is they don't have a lot of color nice. selections. So th- yeah. I've been wearing the gray. I went back and got the black. I The black, okay. I don't love it as much. I don't know why. Probably because my other colors I wear are black. <laughs> and right. I, I need a <laughs> little <you> need variation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need something against the black shirt yeah, underneath it. Yeah, exactly. It's okay, though. So anyway, um, mm-hmm. I will put a link in the show notes and it will be in our Amazon store. If you would like to see it. Well, this this is that's very helpful for me because I was actually just thinking, I think I need some warm clothes when I go. We're going back to Minnesota for a week and I have nothing. I might have some like deep in our storage mm. locker and I don't think I'm going to go dig any of them out. Yeah. So I might have to just like order one sweater and one pair of like warmer pants well and also so this might be it i hope it's okay if i'm gonna be wearing the same sweater as you also when you go to i mean when you go to austin it's cooler i mean it's cooler in january it is I, uh yeah you're gonna need a cardigan for sure yeah i know <laughs> and i do have i'm actually wearing a cardigan right now but it's thin it's mm. it's thinner okay so it's it's a great like summer fall cardigan well i would say this one is it's not thick it's medium Mm-hmm. so yeah yeah that's okay though I don't know if I would want thick either yeah. I like medium okay all right all right well thank you everybody for listening um you can find us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at homeschool unrefined we have our website homeschoolunrefined.com where you can find links to everything that we talked about and we will see you in January thanks for listening Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor, and Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things.